Chapter 21 of Puss in Boots Jr. in New Mother Goose Land. Yankee Doodle up in the air. Yankee Doodle came to town on his aeroplane. He stuck his parachute up in case it should be rainy. Yankee Doodle Doodle Doo, airship stead of pony. And a noodle noodle do stead of macaroni. And this is the way Yankee Doodle came to town in New Mother Goose Land. At first, Puss Jr. did not remember him, but as soon as he heard his jolly voice saying, Hello there, Puss in Boots Jr., our small hero knew who he was. Where's that fine pony of yours? he asked. Yankee Doodle looked at Puss sadly. He ran away one rainy day, and Yankee Doodle Dandy sighed. So I bought this aeroplane and am now a sky sailor. Want to come along for a sail? So Puss Jr. jumped into the airship and away they went through the air as fast as the wind. I can go pretty fast on my gander, said Puss, but never as fast as this. I'm glad you asked me out for a sail, for a goosey gander is not well today and is resting up a bit before we go on a long journey. Why, where are you going? asked Yankee Doodle Dandy. The last time we met, you were in search of your famous father. I found him at the castle of my lord of Carabas, said Puss Jr., but after a year, do you know I became restless? And so I set out once more on a journey of adventure, and here I am. Well, you may have some strange adventures up here, said Yankee Doodle Dandy, for the skies nowadays is like the ocean. It is traversed by strange craft. I only hope it will not become so crowded that we will need traffic policemen to avoid collisions. And just then, as if his fear were to come true, they almost ran into a strange looking craft, but they swerved just in time and so there was no accident. And after that, the strange looking craft disappeared behind a bank of clouds and was lost to sight. These clouds make navigation very dangerous, said Yankee Doodle Dandy, especially when they are in banks. It's impossible to see behind them, and the first thing you know, out comes an airship and you are liable to be run over. Isn't that beautiful? suddenly exclaimed Puss, pointing to a rainbow in the distance. Yes, that's Rainbow Bridge, said Yankee Doodle Dandy. It used to be painted many different colors, but now it only has three, the red, white, and blue. Hurrah for Uncle Sam's rainbow, cried Puss Jr., and now you will have to wait until the next story to find out what happens after that. End of chapter 21。Chapter 22 of Puss in Boots Jr. in New Mother Goose Land。Mary had a little palm。While Puss in Boots Jr. on his feathered steed Goosey Goosey Gander slid down Uncle Sam's rainbow till they came to a schoolhouse. But Mary and her little lamb weren't there, for this was new mother Gooseland, you know. So Puss and Goosey Gander went along till they came to her house. Mary had a little palm, its hair was black as jet, and everywhere that Mary went she took her little pet. She put him in a kennel show to win a ribbon blue, while Mary walked around to give a social bow or two and while she did society her doggy pined and cried and in a day or two alas poor little fido died dear me said little puss jr as mary finished telling him her troubles you should have stayed in old mother goose land but my little lamb grew into a big sheep and i grew up too and father moved and well here i am without any pet at all said mary sadly i wish you'd stay dear puss jr i can't replied our small hero goosey gander and i are on the wing i might say for we fly above the earth as swiftly as an airship and with these words he mounted the gander and was off again on his journey of adventure and now whither shall we go asked goosey goosey gander i do not know said puss let us keep a-going while the wind is blowing never sad always glad with new hope a-glowing and then how that gander did spread his wings and fly and by and by they came to a green wood so they came down to earth to rest in the shade and eat their lunch but when puss jr opened his lunch basket there was nothing in it wasn't that too bad you see he had forgotten to have it filled well there was nothing to do but take a nap and so they lay down and went to sleep 
and puss jr dreamed about the pieman going to the fair and how he had eaten cranberry tarts and drunk lemonade with the country boy named simple simon and he was just going to buy another tart when the pieman said show me first your penny and while he was fumbling in his pocket he woke up and of course the pieman was gone and he was as hungry as ever and in the next story i hope he'll get a good lunch for a traveller must eat to be merry and gay End of chapter 22 Chapter 23 of Puss in Boots, Jr. in New Mother Goose Land Lots of Things Happen As I told you in the last story, when Puss Jr. woke up, he was as hungry as ever. So he said to Goosey Goosey Gander, Let us walk a little way through this wood. Perhaps we may come across a cottage. Well, by and by, they came to a funny little house near a sparkling brook. So they stopped and looked in. And just then, a little bird began to sing this new Mother Gooseland verse. Six little mice sat down to eat. Pussy passed by on tiptoe feet. What are you doing, my little mice? Eating Johnny's cake, and it tastes real nice. Shall I show you, my dears, how to pull out the plums? No, thank you, Miss Pussy. You might bite off our thumbs. This made Goosey Goosey Gander laugh, but it didn't make Puss Jr. even smile. He was now so hungry, he didn't know what to do. So he tapped on the window, and when the little mice saw him, would you believe it? They opened the door and said, Come in, for we know who you are. So in walked our small traveler, and Goosey Gander followed, and pretty soon the six little mice had all sorts of nice things for them to eat, and after that Puss Jr. told them a story about the three blind mice, whose tails were cut off by the farmer's wife. And it was all on account for their eating her nut cake, added Puss, and she told me that if they would promise not to take another nibble, she would give them back their tails. Well, they promised and then she gave them their three little tails. And you should have seen how delighted they were, for a mouse without a tail doesn't look like a mouse at all, you know. Well, after that, Puss Jr. said goodbye, and taking his seat upon the gander's back, flew up into the air and over the treetops far away, and by and by they came to a little house on the mountainside where lived an old bear, who was first cousin to the bear, who was so fond of Snow White and Rose Red. And as the gander was wing-weary, they came down to earth and spoke to the bear, who was sitting outside in the sun. "'Welcome to my mountain,' he said. "'My cousin has told me about a cat who wore boots and helped him to regain his human form. "'Alas, I am a prince also, but no one has yet come to deliver me from the spell.' At those words, Puss touched him with the little gold ring he wore on his big toe. And would you believe it, the bear became a handsome prince, in less time than I can tell it. End of chapter 23 Chapter 24 of Puss in Boots, Jr. in New Mother Gooseland, Poor Moon In the last story, you remember we left off just as Puss Jr. turned the bear into a handsome prince and the hut into a stately castle. And if any little reader has missed the story before this, I will tell him that Puss had a magic gold ring on his big toe, which would remove any evil charm. Wasn't that nice? And the prince thought so too, for if it hadn't been for our little traveler and his gold ring, the prince would still be a bear. Well, after that, the prince invited them to stay at the castle which they did for almost a week. And didn't they have fun? Goosey Goosey Gander played with the swans on the silver moat. And Puss Jr. went horseback riding with the prince every morning and played checkers with him in the evening. But what he did in the afternoon, I don't know. For the prince had a new airship and they went up so high in the sky that I couldn't see. So we will have to wait until you read this little verse of New Mother Gooseland. Hey diddle diddle, kerplunk in the middle. 
The airship punctured the moon. The little dog laughed aboard of the craft, while the fiddle kept playing a tune. And now you know what happened, and so do I. And then Puss Jr. told the prince about the cow that jumped over the moon, instead of kicking it like the airship. And the man in the moon put his head out of the window and told her to be very careful not to chip off a piece of green cheese, said our little traveler. But the prince only laughed and said that accidents would happen. And he thought anyway, the moon was way out of her course. Well, the next morning, Puss and Goosey Gander said goodbye and set off once more on their journey of adventure. And everybody who saw them smiled, for indeed it was a queer picture. Puss Jr., astride of a large gander, who flew at times just over the telegraph poles and the chimneys unless there was smoke coming out. And in many of the little towns they passed over, the children would shout and cry, There goes a cat with boots and spurs, with a gander for his steed. Now, after they had flown for many miles, and it was toward evening, the gander settled himself on the roof of a big red barn, and Puss Jr. slid down the haystack which was against one end, and knocked on the door of a little farmhouse to ask for something to eat. And the reason the gander didn't come down was because there was a big dog in the barnyard. But Puss wasn't afraid, for in New Mother Gooseland, everybody is as happy as can be, unless he does something wrong. When, of course, he is not. But very few boys and girls do wrong, which makes it a lovely place to live in. And I suppose when you little boys and girls who read this story are grown up, you will tell your children, just as I am telling you, about this new mother goose land which Little Puss Jr. has discovered. End of chapter 24「Back to the Sawdust Ring」Puss Jr. was once more traveling on foot, for Goosey Gander had decided to make a visit at the Red Barn, where we left him in the last story. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, shining from your motor car, once you thought it all the rage just to twinkle from a stage sang a parrot from her cage outside the stage entrance of the theater as Puss in Boots Jr. entered a pretty town. That night there was to be a circus, but how the elephant was ever going to act on the stage is more than I can tell. But let us wait and see, for pretty soon we'll buy tickets, unless little Puss Jr. sends us half a dozen passes. And wasn't it lucky? It was the same circus that Puss had once joined, oh, a long, long time ago. And the kind-hearted clown and the circus queen and the big gray horse gave him as many tickets as he could use. So let us go in with him at once and see the show. But wasn't it too bad? Just at the last moment, one of the riders sprained his leg and there was nobody to ride the big gray horse. And then the circus lady began to cry, for she had no one to perform with. And when Puss Jr. saw this, he jumped down from his seat and ran behind where the actor folks were all waiting for their turns and put on a riding suit with a little silk top hat and jumped on the big gray horse and rode round and round the ring, bowing and taking off his hat. And when the lovely circus queen saw him, she jumped on her beautiful black horse and came into the ring and all the people cheered and clapped their hands. And let me tell you, Puss Jr. hadn't forgotten any of his old tricks. He jumped through rings with tissue paper over them. Only first, of course, the ringmaster made a little hole in the middle so he could just squint through before he jumped. And the big gray horse jogged around and around and pretty soon the circus lady jumped from the black horse onto the big gray horse, and Puss Jr. held her on. That is, he made believe, you know, for of course she could ride all right. And then the people all clapped again and said, bravo, which means well done, or something like that. And when the circus was over, Puss was asked to make a speech, but instead he recited this little poem. Oh, I'm in love with a sawdust ring, and on the trapeze I'd like to swing. But my big gray horse I'd rather ride than anything else I've ever tried. End of chapter 25 Chapter 26 of Puss in Boots, Jr., 
in New Mother Goose Land. Don't tell a lie. Puss Jr. decided to travel a while with the circus, for he and the clown had become fast friends. The clown was a nice sort of chap. He would sit and talk to Puss after the show was over, and on Sundays, take long walks with him in the country. One Sunday afternoon, he said, Come and sit by me, my little friend, and I will tell you in rhyme a story about myself when I was a little chap. So Puss Jr. curled up beside him, and then the clown began. When I was a little boy, I said to myself, I guess I'll eat the bread and cheese that's on the pantry shelf. And then I told my mother, the rats and the mice had eaten up her bread and cheese, which wasn't very nice. And so that evening, when I went to bed, I couldn't sleep. To think that I had told a lie just made me weep and weep. At last I crept out of my bed, and to my mother went, and told her all about it in a manner penitent. And then besides, I had a pain, an awful stomach ache, and that, you know, is quite enough to keep one wide awake. And mother said, Indeed, it was a naughty thing to do. Of course you could not sleep, because your conscience troubled you. She kissed me then and tucked me in, before she went downstairs. And for a while I lay awake, although I'd said my prayers. I couldn't quite make up my mind. It kept me still awake. Which hurt the worst, my conscience or my stuffy stomach ache? But I know now which it was, said the clown, patting Puss on the head with a tender touch. It was my conscience, for we can't do wrong, little friend, without being sorry for it. And some day I hope to go back to my dear old mother and tell her. And he wiped a tear from his eye and patted Puss again. End of chapter 26「Chapter 27 of Puss in Boots, Jr. in New Mother Goose Land The Silver Fish One can't stay with a circus all one's life. That is, if he wants to travel up high mountains and cross rivers and visit castles and dungeons. So, Puss Jr. said goodbye to the kind circus people, and to little Tom Thumb, too, for the little fellow was making so much money he wished to stay with the circus until he had a million dollars, and then he was going to retire. So, once more, Puss Jr. was traveling alone. But he was used to it, for had he not gone all through Mother Goose Land till he had found his famous father, Puss in Boots? And was he not now seeking adventures in New Mother Goose Land? Well, on he tramped till by and by he came to a village, and as he walked down the main street, little Jack Horner sat in the corner of his father's candy shop. He held in his thumb not a sugar plum, but a licious lollipop. And when Jack saw Puss Jr., he almost dropped his candy, for he had never seen a cat with boots and spurs and a sword. But Puss only grinned and said, Pick up your candy, little Jack Horner for candy doesn't grow on trees, and you are a lucky boy to have a lollipop to eat. And with these words, Puss Jr. turned around and went down the street whistling a tune. And by and by he came to a brook, and just as he jumped across, he saw a pretty silverfish. Hello there, silverfish, said Puss. If I had a hook and line, I'd soon catch you and then Puss grinned at his own reflection in the clear water. And if the fish hadn't seen Puss on the bank, I guess he would have thought there was a real cat in the brook. But you can't drop me a line, Puss Jr., replied the fish, with a swish of his tail. And if you did, how do you know I would write? I mean bite. I suppose maybe he thought Puss was going to write him a letter. But I have news for you, continued the fish. 
It was but a fortnight ago when I was swimming in the moat that surrounds the castle of my lord of Carabas. I had the pleasure of talking with your illustrious father. Oh, tell me, how is he? asked Puss anxiously, for he was very, very fond of his famous father, as you know. He is enjoying most excellent health, replied the fish. Would you like to send him a message? I am returning to the castle moat in a few days. Tell him, said Puss Jr., and his voice faltered, for he felt a bit homesick at the thought. Tell him that I am well, and I shall hope to see him when I have finished my journey in new Mother Goose land. End of chapter 27「Chapter Twenty Eight of Puss in Boots Jr. in New Mother Goose Land Home to the Old Farm Hark, hark, the dogs do bark. Suffragettes are coming to town, and some will vote to wear a coat, and some a velvet gown. Sakes alive! exclaimed the farmer. I must look out. An automobile has just frightened my old mare. And then his daughter, so rosy and fair, smiled at Puss, and the old gray mare kicked out her heels and began to neigh to frighten the suffragettes away. Now, I meant to put these lines in verse form, but my typewriter wouldn't stop to do it. So you will have to read them over, if they don't rhyme properly, until you find out just where the rhymes come in. Well, as soon as the jolly party in the automobile drove away and the parade stopped, the farmer tied the old gray mare to a post, and Puss Jr. took the daughter, so rosy and fair, into a candy shop to buy some sweets. And then they came back and untied the gray mare, for the farmer had gone into a store to buy some seeds for his farm. Well, pretty soon it was time to go home. Come along with us, said the daughter, so rosy and fair. And then Puss climbed up behind, and the gray mare never complained a bit. Although she had a pretty heavy load with the farmer and his daughter and little Puss Jr., she just trotted along, and as no automobile came by and no raven cried, Croak! She didn't fall down and break her crown. I mean, her knee. I must have been thinking of Jack and Jill when I said that. I guess. And by and by they reached the farm, and oh my! It was a pretty place. Daffodils grew in the garden and sunflowers along the fence and honeysuckles on the front porch and morning glories around the back door. And you know what a dear, old, comfortable farm looks like, don't you? It's a lovely place to come home to at night when the sun is going down beyond the western hills and the first faint evening star is coming up over the damp meadows and all the air is still, except for a twitter here and there, from the trees or a distant crow of some barnyard rooster who is saying good night to the friendly sun. And now, little children, good night, for in the next story it will be morning, and Puss Jr. will be getting out of bed. End of chapter 28 Chapter 29 of Puss in Boots Jr. in New Mother Goose Land Puss has a narrow escape. When Puss in Boots Jr. awoke the next morning, he was surprised to find himself at the old farmhouse. But you needn't be, for in the last story we left him there with the farmer and daughter so rosy and fair. Well, as soon as he dressed himself, he ran downstairs and out into the barnyard. And there he found the farmer already up and feeding the chickens. And the first thing he said to Puss was, Cackle, cackle, yellow ham. She laid an egg outside the pen. She has a new nest somewhere now. Perhaps it is up in the big haymow. Perhaps it is, said Puss. And he ran up the ladder in the barn to the loft, which was full of hay. And by and by came across the yellow hen's nest. And it had eleven white eggs in it too. So Puss put them in his hat and climbed down carefully and handed them to the farmer. 
but you should have heard that yellow hen cackle. She was as mad as mad could be, for she was going to hatch these eggs into pretty little yellow chickens, or maybe into little black chicks. That's too bad," said Puss. "Let's put the eggs back. No, you better take the pitchfork and spread the straw in the gray mare's stall," said the farmer. But when this was done, little, kind-hearted Puss Junior placed the eggs in the nest again. And the yellow hen was so pleased that she crowed like a rooster, and this woke up the farmer's daughter so rosy and fair. And pretty soon she came downstairs and ran out to pick some daffy down dillies. And then breakfast was ready. And after that, Puss said goodbye and continued his journey through New Mother Gooseland. Well, after he had walked for many miles, he came to a wood where he sat down to eat the lunch which the farmer's wife had put out for him. And then he fell asleep and had a lovely dream, and he dreamed about all the pleasant comrades who had traveled with him: his good gray horse, little Tom Thumb, the curious clown, Goosey, Goosey Gander, and others whom I forget for a moment, but perhaps you will remember them. And while he was dreaming, who should walk up but his good gray steed? And when he saw his little master fast asleep, he stood very still. And then he tiptoed off a little way to eat some tender grass until Puss should open his eyes, and I guess maybe he would have slept all the afternoon if the good gray horse hadn't seen a wolf sneaking through the trees, when he gave a loud neigh and ran up to his small master, and Puss woke up with a start and pulled out his sword. Keep it in your hand, little master," said the horse, "for you may need it any minute." And in the next story, you shall hear whether Puss has use for his sword or not. End of chapter twenty nine. Chapter thirty of Puss in Boots Junior in New Mother Gooseland, King Cole and King Cinder. You remember in the last story how the good gray horse woke up Puss Junior just as the wicked wolf was sneaking through the trees. Well, as soon as Puss had drawn his sword, and he said to his foremost steed, "You have done me a good turn, my four-footed friend. I see the wolf yonder, but he dares not come near for fear I will thrust my sword through him. Get on my back, little master, and I will carry you wherever you wish to go." cried the good gray horse. So Puss Junior jumped on his back and rode off, but the wicked wolf did not follow, for he was afraid. And after a while, the good gray horse halted before a stately castle. So Puss Junior knocked it loudly on the postern gate with the hilt of his sword, and pretty soon a retainer appeared and inquired what they wished. "My good man," said Puss Junior, "we are travelers, my good gray horse and I. And as the day is far spent and the night is at hand, we seek a night's lodging. Come in then and welcome," said the retainer. For my master never turns away a traveler, although thus far we have never been honored by a cat in boots. Then he swung wide the great gates, and Puss Junior on his good gray horse rode proudly in, with his trusty sword grasping his right paw. Then several men in waiting came forward and led his steed to the royal stables, while others escorted Puss into the castle. Then, all of a sudden, several voices began singing this song. Old King Cole is a merry old soul, and a merry old soul is he. He burns in the grate from early till late, and crackles away merrily. He weighs quite a ton; you can poke him in fun, and he'll laugh and burn brightly in glee. But my, how he'll pout if you let him go out! What a cheery old cinder he'll be! And just as the song ended, in came King Cole and King Cinder. They were brothers, you know, but as different as could be. King Cole was fat and jolly, but King Cinder was gray and thin and never smiled. Oh, never! Not even a sneaker when the court jester made a joke or told a funny story. He was always so put out at everything. Welcome, Sir Cat! cried King Cole. Come, amuse us with a tale of your travels. So Puss Junior sat down. And began telling a story which you shall hear tomorrow, for I have no more room to tell it to you now. End of chapter thirty.